Hi, Poonam. How are you? Hi, Siddharth. I'm great. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. How is everything going? The lockdown and everything? It's, it's going good, yeah. It's working well for me so far. Lockdown seems to be very productive, actually. So, mm -hmm. going good. Mm -hmm. How is the fam? Good. Everyone's great. Awesome, awesome. So, what, what have you learned during the lockdown? So lockdown has taught me how to be very productive uh, at home, sitting at home, which I never really was a big fan of. So mm -hmm. uh, it's helping me uh, in many ways. Of course, you're getting time to spend time with the family, which is okay. so it's been a, a, a good learning experience, actually. Wonderful. Wonderful. So today yeah. you're here to help us understand more about yoga for kids and yes absolutely before that we would like to know how you got started in this journey sure so um i've had a quite a roller coaster of a journey mm -hmm. um i'll tell you a bit about it so i started off uh, with my graduation in dentistry mm -hmm. at the time i only knew that i wanted to do something related to the human body because i was always very intrigued by it Sure. But as time passed, I realized that uh, it's something that I like to do, but I was not able to love it entirely. Mm -hmm. uh, in any, any way, I, I decided to study further and I went to LA. I did a course at UCLA to see what more I can you know, explore in the field of dentistry. Mm -hmm. So while I was there, I was very surprised to see the influence of yoga on the Westerners. Sure. You know, although I've always been a fitness enthusiast and a dancer uh, all my life, I had never really been to yoga to that extent. Sure. So when I came back, I continued uh, to work as a dental professional. But my interest in fitness had grown by then. Mm -hmm. So it was, uh, so you know, that time I became like a huge gym fanatic. Mm -hmm. And it was then that I saw a huge transformation in my fitness levels and my appearance. So uh, it, I decided, you know, why not uh, do something in the field of fitness? Because I was, you know, beginning to be uh, driven towards it. Sure. So uh, that's when I thought that, okay, I want to do something in the field of fitness. And yoga was something that was on top of my list because I always knew that yoga has a lot more to offer than just Yoga has a lot to offer than just physical fitness. So that's when I decided uh, that, you know, why not give it a shot? So I took up this opportunity to do the yoga teacher training certification. Uh, the classes would happen on weekends and I would work through the week. Uh, I was still active in the field of dentistry at that point. But that was a monumental moment in my career because uh, I really started loving the whole process of uh, learning the yogic science, the philosophy behind it. Mm -hmm. I wanted to keep learning more. So I went ahead, I did the medical yoga therapy uh, course, which deals with chronic ailments, you know, people mm -hmm. who have uh, aches and pains in the knee joint, shoulder uh, pains or neck pains. So that can be addressed with yoga. So, sure. you know, I just went ahead, did a lot of other courses to hone my skills. I also did a certification in the Matt Pilates. Uh, it's an international oh. certification. So I did that because I believe that it's, uh, you know, it's important to provide variations in class. Otherwise, it can get really monotonous for your clients. Sure. So while I was enjoying this whole process so much, I thought, why not pursue my lifelong passion for dance as well? Because I've always been a dancer, but I never thought of taking it up professionally. But mm -hmm. uh, I thought, you know, I can, you know, start. Uh, then I started taking dance classes for kids and adults. I did a choreographies as well so mm -hmm. I don't know uh, I was not anticipating all these eventualities but I'm just glad the way things transpired because I just went with the flow I just went after what I loved and things just started happening one after the other so that's 
been pretty much the journey and there's been no looking back ever since interesting so what happened in dentistry um it's there i mean i can i always uh, can get back to it whenever i want yeah. to but i just feel like you know it's life is too short you should just do what you love and do yeah. it completely yeah definitely definitely so what what uh, form of yoga interests you the most um i think i like uh, hatha yoga mm-hmm. because that involves uh, you know holding the poses and uh, it involves a lot of meditation and so something that's a combination of breathing plus yoga uh, exercises is something that interests me right but i like all forms i mean it's like i said very variety is really good for a class definitely so definitely. yeah so um, yeah uh, you started doing your courses and when did you decide to take it up seriously you know after the courses you just decided to you know get done with your stop your dentistry work and um this start with yoga um so the thing is i've uh, i chose yoga because uh, you know i've tried all other forms of fitness in the past like i said i was uh, you know i used to go to the gym i did functional training all sorts of cardio workouts and they all have their benefits but when i did when i started learning yoga it something transformed within me and yeah. uh, it it's just uh, it's something that not only improves your physical fitness but it also enhances your emotional and mental health which is you know very underrated i feel definitely so that's when uh, yoga really caught my attention and when i got serious was basically when i started you know experiencing all these benefits when it's uh, you know when it became so instrumental in changing my physical mental spiritual and emotional health i thought why not share this practice with everyone and mm. you know make a difference in every you know people's lives sure so that's when i got really serious about it wonderful wonderful and uh, yeah so you've seen a drastic change in your life as well that right? drastic yeah mm. great so uh, but do you still work out and do other things like gymming and cycling or, um or is i love to okay? yoga is has taken the forefront uh, as of now mm-hmm. but i definitely love to you know do gymming at least once or twice a week and any form of cardio like i do play uh, once a week or you know whenever i want to but i think i'm i've just been so busy with the whole classes and right. doing uh, you know it myself so yeah. yeah definitely i mean uh, one thing is doing yoga yourself and then you have to uh, teach and train others so that's definitely yeah so you have to remove time and uh, you know for that as well sure sure so talk to us about your work with kids in yoga mhm okay so i've always had a great fondness for kids so when i began this yoga endeavor i wanted to incorporate kids yoga as well sure so with kids it's more of fun play along with yoga it's mm-hmm. more like uh, you know you're narrating a story while uh, letting them depict certain things or animals in the yoga poses oh okay it's actually a lot of fun because you know with kids their energy is contagious and mm-hmm. they're always completely engrossed in the moment so yeah. you're basically just letting them be and enjoy the whole flow uh you know while you're taking the yoga class right so it's very fun filled and it's uh, you know very stress free mhm but uh, okay so no yeah. challenges no definitely there are a few challenges like in any other you know practice or any other field Mm-hmm. um a few of them uh, you know basically uh, kids have a naturally short attention span which yeah. needs to be managed constantly and uh, you need that attention to be able to teach them the importance of you know stillness or how to balance so you definitely need their attention right. um but there are ways you can uh, 
help them uh, be attentive is uh, usually see and they love to move and both of which can happen in yoga mm-hmm. so uh, the way we overcome these challenges are basically you know we make it interesting like i said yeah. uh, you you know you through storytelling so they will jump at the chance of uh, you know at the chance to assume the role of animals or trees or flowers and warriors so my role is just to step back and allow them to ba- you know like bark in the dog pose or hiss in the cobra or just mm-hmm. let them meow when the cat stretch right. so there are different ways where you know you can uh, overcome the challenge of you know a short attention span for mm-hmm. kids sound is another great uh, release for children when you use music it adds a an auditory dimension to the whole uh, you know physical experience of yoga so yeah and what i've learned is you know children need to discover a world on their own if i tell them to you know think harder or do it better or you know just do it a certain way i don't think that's going to work so just you know believe in providing a loving positive and a creative environment for them which will actually encourage them and help them discover themselves better so sure. so sure. so yeah i mean this is an ideal scenario but there's never really ideal scenario so how do you handle the naughty ones um like i said uh, yeah of course but uh, i just think of myself as a facilitator more than a teacher okay. so i let them uh, you know i guide them but i simultaneously let them guide me as well then when i do that that helps me create a you know harmony in class and it helps me bond with them. so if if you think that if i feel like you know there's a naughty child i let them be for a while and i let them do what they want and eventually when the whole class is doing a certain activity they eventually get themselves involved as well yeah. so like i said you can't force anything on them you just have to go with the flow and go with their tempo Mm-hmm. so when you do that they they sense that you're able to understand and let them be so then they start to cooperate with you as well sure it's just basically showing a lot of patience with them nothing else mhm interesting yeah yeah i mean uh, i can't imagine i mean i i actually coached a kid for 6 months and i went out of my mind yeah it's so tough <laughs> the yeah yeah it it can be tough but uh, I've been lucky like I've not really had to be extremely naughty child but right. I think I'll be able to handle that yeah wonderful um okay before I started yoga I mean I I'm not that regular but before I did uh-huh. I thought yoga was extremely boring what are uh-huh. your thoughts on that um first of all yoga is anything but boring mm-hmm. because what happens in yoga is you cannot be thinking about anything else if you're doing your yoga correctly sure. you know because that involves when you're doing a yoga posture correctly it it will involve the alignment of your body your mind and your breath when there are so many things involved you can't really think of anything else. so if anything it's very engaging and it sure. can be very fun if you if you do it under the right guidance mm-hmm. so i don't think it's it's boring you just have to uh have a different perspective to it i think right right and yeah like another guest of mine said eventually everyone goes to yoga despite all the sports despite everything at the end everyone absolutely goes. absolutely you know and uh, i i've seen like gym hardcore gym lovers and everyone who are trained and they actually become addictive because the advantages that yoga has to offer mm-hmm. it uh, it complements somebody who's an athlete or somebody who's like a weightlifter because it really helps you relax and stretch your body really well so they will come back to you and they'll be like okay i need to stretch this muscle because i've you know had a very heavy weightlifting session today so it becomes very addictive after a, a, a while mm-hmm. i feel yeah right so um do kids get addicted to it as well absolutely i was actually very uh, 
surprised to see a few of uh, the kids like the moms you know the first class the kid was very apprehensive and mm -hmm. some kids are very shy they don't really open up and they're very uh, skeptical of the whole process yeah. but uh, after a few sessions the mom was like uh, you know that they're just waiting all week for the class and they're so excited and all ready and you know to uh, for looking forward to the class so i think uh, somewhere it engages them as well like there it's uh, it's very fun and it involves a lot of fun and play and it helps them to stimulate their creativity and imagination so i think that's what uh, plays a huge role getting them addictive to it mm -hmm. right right yeah. so okay you mentioned storytelling but um, what are mm -hmm. some of the different uh, things that you uh do like in your yoga classes so there are different ways there are different story you can make them assume uh, like i said of animals animals is like a top favorite thing for all kids they just love to uh depict all these animal postures and if i forget something they'll they'll remind me oh no the tiger was like this or mm. you know this was the lion pose so they really love the whole animal theme besides mm. that we use music uh in in our class like i said which involves uh, a different uh you know aspect to uh, the, i mean music helps them to relax better and enjoy class also through role playing there are different ways in which you can help them uh role playing storytelling and there are different activities for kids uh as there are these kids yoga cards you know the yoga decks which are used so you can use them in a, in different ways like you can randomly give out those cards to all your students and uh, whichever card they've got there is a particular pose on it so if there's a tree pose they have to do the tree pose so sure. you can use these cards in very creative ways like you can play musical chairs with those uh, cards instead and whoever you know stops at the particular card you have to do that pose or you know make like a trail or a sequence of these cards and as and when they go so there's a surprise element so the kid doesn't know what pose they have to do but when they open the card it's like you know so you can make it fun by adding these activities you just have to be creative you have to constantly right. come up with different things with whatever you have and uh, yeah so right. you definitely have to be very creative with them definitely yeah. i mean especially now uh people just want new new things every time right yeah yeah Yeah. and kids uh, with kids you have to uh, you know use their imagination because they are very curious and uh, inquisitive and you have to kind of play with that aspect of this sure sure um yeah so you mentioned um, kids and uh, parents wanting the, the kids wanting to come back every week so how often Sorry? do you usually, yeah how often do kids usually you know do yoga how often should they do and is it ideal to do once a week or twice thrice um there's nothing ideal but uh, once a week uh, i you can even do it twice a week but you usually kids have so many other activities Sure. Uh, they have so many other classes so you don't want to burden them with anything you don't want you want the yoga bit to be stress free mm -hmm. so even if they do it once a week it's good but it's just you know important to introduce uh, yoga at a very early age so even if you're able to you know manage their time and you know send them once a week for class it's great mm -hmm. so you can have it once a week or twice a week depending on their availability depending on how what's their schedule Right. There's no hard and fast rule to it. Oh, and I forgot to ask, what about the age? Um I would recommend uh, four years so uh, and oh, onwards. So early? Uh, I think uh, Yeah, 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 you can because by four years uh, they've usually that uh, their motor skills completely. Sure. So they're able to comprehend better, they're able to understand what you're uh, you know
and uh, comprehend what you're trying to tell them. So uh, I think that's a good age, even though kids are really sharp today and even uh, uh, as early as a three-year-old child will be able to also understand what you're trying to say. But I think four years is a good age group where they will really enjoy the whole uh, process and understand the benefits that it has to offer. Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah. Okay. All right. I don't have a kid, but if I had a mm -hmm. four-year-old kid or a five-year-old kid, um, what benefits would I expect? Um, there is a plethora of benefits that yoga has to offer for kids. I'm just going to briefly mention a few to you. Uh, it helps them to learn about uh, starting from you know their body parts. It helps them to breathe correctly, which is basically the foundation of a strong mind. When you teach them how to breathe correctly, because there are a lot of people, as we age, we forget to breathe correctly. And mm -hmm. uh, so if you incorporated that from right from the beginning, so they understand the importance of correct breathing and they'll follow that all their lives. Mm -hmm. So, you know, their posture, they understand what is the importance of a good posture. So it just sets a benchmark for them for the future. Right. Of course, it develops their creativity, it develops their imagination, their concentration and focus. Mm -hmm. It helps to build their strength, flexibility. It helps, them, uh, you know, it helps them learn coordination skills and improves uh, their internal organs. It rejuvenates their internal organs and glands and gives them a robust immune system. So there are a lot of uh, benefits physically, mentally, and also emotionally. It really teaches them how to relax. It, it calms their nervous system. It helps them how to just uh, sit in one place, focus, concentrate, understand. Mm -hmm. So all these benefits are there. And from medical point of view, uh, you, you can, uh, you know, there is, like I'll just explain you this one example of there is this gland known as pineal gland which is present in the brain in between the two hemispheres. Right. So as we age around you know maybe 10 years the gland starts to diminish. It's very active in the childhood but as we age it starts to diminish and when that happens uh, it's because of the aging process. So with yoga what happens is the aging of this gland is delayed. So it's active in kids for a longer period of time mm -hmm. if the child is doing yoga and meditation, etc. Meditation is nothing but mindful breathing. There are different techniques uh, of you know teaching mindful breathing to kids. Mm -hmm. So when you do that, so this gland is active for a very long time and because of which the child experiences childhood for a very long period of time. Because nowadays what happens is uh, the transition is happening very quickly you know, in kids. They're losing out on their childhood at a very early age because of all the exposure that we have and, you know, the environment. Right. So that leads, uh, you know, to a lot of anger issues coming in very early, the anxiety in kids and all the other effects which we experience in our adulthood. So oh. that can be really managed well if you introduce yoga at a very early age. So with yoga, uh, these issues can be, uh, you know, handled really well and uh, the child reaps benefits of uh, doing the yoga practice right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. I'd just like to quote Dalai Lama here. He said that if you start teaching 10 years child meditation, mm -hmm. within one generation, we can erase the violence from the earth. Wow. And I think uh, it's it's very profound what he said and it's very, very true. So. I truly believe in that. Sure. That's, that's the importance of, uh, you know, yoga for kids today. Sure. Especially today, in today's times, you know. Yeah, yeah, with social media and video games, it's, it's in... Absolutely. There are so many things to distract them and nothing that, you know, uh, kind of brings them, uh, makes them centered or makes them, you know, just let them let, lets them just be sure. so i think yoga really helps them to kind of uh be more grounded and more centered 
Sure. Yeah. Sure. So, um, how soon do parents come up to you and mention that there's been an incredible change in their kids' behavior or anything? Is it, I'm sure it's not an immediate thing, right? Uh, yeah, of course, it's not immediate. But even in a couple of classes, I think uh, they can see minor changes. Mm-hmm. But usually it takes a few sessions. It depends on the child and how they're uh, responding in class and how they're taking it. But I usually take feedback from parents after a few sessions. And, uh, you know, the most common feedback that comes to me is that uh, definitely the, that the, there is improved focus levels mm-hmm. in the child. The child is able to concentrate better and they're less hyperactive Mm -hmm. and, you know, uh, they're a lot calmer because it definitely calms them, it calms their nervous, soothes their nervous system. So uh, these are the few things which are very common uh, among kids who are practicing yoga. Mm -hmm. Besides that, like I mentioned before, uh, forms of breathing, they learn to breathe correctly and when you when you give uh, them time to breathe mindfully or just sit there and you know enjoy like belly breathing or uh, humming the uh, mm-hmm. breathing these really help to stimulate their mind uh, stimulate their uh, brain cells basically sure. so when when they do this practice for a continued period of time it lays a strong foundation for a strong mind so they're able to contr- have a control over their mind better sure. by the right breathing. So that obviously you can imagine the changes then that will have when uh, you've learned to, you know, have control over your mind. Definitely. Definitely. Um, okay. Imagining myself as a parent, tough to really mm-hmm. tough to imagine, but <laughs> if I have to do so. Um some of the concerns I'd have is, you know, with the kid doing, you know, wrong poses, you make them do a, what, what, what is that you call it, headstand, handstand, or some of those okay. poses. Parents, I'm sure, will be really afraid of, you know, the kids getting injured, right? So what are some of the issues? Um, uh, see, the issue, the safety concerns are there like in any other class. But uh, when you mention handstands and headstands, we don't uh, generally do it. We don't advise inversions for kids because uh, it affects their growth, you know. So we don't, uh, there are only a certain exercises that are, uh, you know, uh, allowed for kids and inversions are not some of those. So uh, we do follow a safety protocol and we do only the exercises that the kids can, you know, are able to do comfortably. Right. And like I said, we don't really push them to do anything so, you know, that there are chances of injuries or anything. Mm-hmm. We just let them enjoy the whole flow. So it's more like, a, uh, you know, you're letting them be and you're letting them enjoy and the whole process on their own. So safety concerns is not so much, but I feel what's uh, uh, an issue generally today is, uh, you know, the lack of awareness uh, of importance of yoga for kids uh, parents are very you know they they aren't they don't know the importance of yoga for kids so that is that is where the issue is actually so they would be very excited for a dance class which is great you know for kids but when it comes to yoga they might hesitate they're like okay why do kids need to do yoga because they're already so flexible and they can already uh, do so many things but um, like I mentioned the benefits you know mm-hmm. that needs yes, that needs to be somehow uh, you know told to people that uh, there are several several benefits for kids uh, who do yoga and that should be encouraged from the very beginning wonderful so Puna one, uh, one piece of advice for the parents who are listening mm. I'd just like to say a few things, uh, you know, in that uh, regard. Mm -hmm. So I think that education in yoga uh, or spiritual life should be given to children from the very beginning because as they grow, they're naturally very curious and they want to learn. And yoga really helps them to be curious and excited while still being educational. Mm -hmm. So if, 
so you know if you motivate them to practice yoga at an early age they can really reap the benefits of this in the future and follow this wonderful path to a healthy lifestyle sure and also a consistent yoga practice can help them develop their emotional and social skills which is uh, you know very important today along with obviously having other physical and mental benefits as well mm-hmm. so i would just advise for parents to just you know believe in the process of yoga and just let them experience the goodness right from the beginning right right yeah all right wonderful punam thank you so much most welcome Really, it was a pleasure talking to you yeah i mean uh, we wanted uh, you specifically because uh, i mean we did notice your work with kids and uh, thank you so much for um, sure. enlightening thank you. us the listeners i'm sure they, they'll um, come out with different um, what can you say once in perspective yeah, yeah. and um, yeah maybe. i'm glad i'm glad i'm sure So um where can they get in touch with you where can they Um so yeah so I uh they can get in touch with me anywhere on uh, on either on Facebook or Instagram uh I go by at nyasa yoga so it's n y a s a yoga mm-hmm. so that's on Facebook and Instagram and my email address is nyasa yoga. at gmail.com wonderful and uh, okay so listeners may have the wrong impression that you just teach for kids you just teach kids that is not the case uh mm-hmm. yeah all ages right definitely yes all ages and uh, there is no barring to it sure and uh, you mentioned you done work with dance so do you take dance classes as well Yes, I do. I take dance classes for kids and adults. Okay. Okay, so uh they can find all the information at the Nyasa Yoga social media. Yeah, app. they can definitely find the information there or they can contact me directly on uh, my email address and I shall guide them with the further details. Wonderful. So Poonam thank you so much once again and uh, hope to see you soon. Yes thank you Sada thank you for being board it was really nice talking to you I hope uh, I was of some help for all your listeners and uh, thanks again have a great day. Yeah thank you.